Well, let's start our Stamtisch of today. Thank you very much for everybody for joining this Stamtisch. And it's a great pleasure for us to have today, as usual, as every time, nearly every, every time, Dr. Rainer Kurz here at our table. And he has prepared a keynote speech concerning Australia, the lucky country. Mm -hmm. I want to give you some remarks concerning our speaker. He calls Australia his second home. He lives and works three months of uh, the year in uh, Sydney. While many Germans see down under as the perfect country, Dr. Kurt's speech compares the strengths and weaknesses of the fifth continent. Specific, uh, specifically, the following topics will be covered. It's uh, geography, history, economy, and lifestyle, and the current challenges. Well, let's start. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much. So, uh, now, uh, thank you very much for introducing me. Now, we already have heard the different topics uh, I will cover. But first, I have a question to you. Who of you have already been to Australia? So, I count three, two, uh, two people, yeah. Very good. So, for everyone who doesn't know, this is the Australian flag. <laughs> so that's the Union Jack, including the Southern Cross, uh, which also demonstrates that uh, Australia is uh, part of the Commonwealth, the head of state is the Queen. So uh, before I will just do my lecture about any topic, uh, I would like to ask you, what do you want to know about Australia, or what do you already know about Australia, which I could uh, maybe uh, cover a little bit in my speech? Do they eat kangaroos? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah, we'll cover that, yeah. Uh, well, we have friends who have a son who is in Australia now, and um, he, he's interested in maybe staying there. He got to know a, uh, a girl, and uh, they might want to get married and uh, he's thinking about studying there and uh, uh, now they don't really know how to, uh, what they have to do to uh, you know what what they have to you know do to to make that possible mm -hmm. yeah some yeah the language please english or the specific australian dialect accent yeah. is that throughout the whole country of the continent or are there differences? Mm -hmm. Is there an Aboriginal language still existing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think there was a certain uh, difference, uh, certain differences between the different areas of Australia, the mm -hmm. north and the south and mm -hmm. the west and east. Differences in terms of landscape or people or Not about only landscape, climate, uh -huh. uh, especially climate. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or oh, they call this uh, the challenge is like blood and fires mm -hmm. and yeah. all. Yeah. They restructure the country. The feeling of the people about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I ex and experienced I actually three natural disasters. Mm -hmm. uh, during my last stay, uh, which was just the beginning of this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. So, I start, uh, and uh, I would like to start in a historical way. Now, Australia was uh, settled by people about 60,000 years ago by the first Australians, the Aboriginal people. And we uh, were living there until about uh, 200 years ago. Uh, white people came. Uh, very specifically, it was uh, well, the, the British uh, people who claimed uh, Australia to be their country <coughs> because Captain Cook actually was the first one to go around Australia and uh, to claim the land, which was uh, just a little bit, uh, maybe uh, two months ahead, of uh, Captain uh, La Perouse. Uh, elsewise, Australia would be a French-speaking country, and I would do the same speech here in French language. <laughs> so, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, so we Aboriginal people uh, basically were living in a culture which we would consider Stone Age. So we had uh, some some tools. We could do fishing, but we didn't have any any uh, written language, and uh, we didn't uh, work with this metal, for example. Uh, also, there are Aboriginal people in Tasmania, which were even uh, less less developed. So uh, these people even didn't know how to build boats, or they didn't know how to swim, even though we were living on an island. So just just to see this big clash of, of cultures, and. It, uh, Aboriginal people are still uh, alive and uh, to some degree we still keep their culture and so it's said that it's the oldest existing culture, still existing culture in the world. So there is no other culture on this planet which has not changed for the last let's say 60,000 years. So, uh, so that's a little bit about the history uh, before the European settlement. And then uh, the European settlers came, the British came. You know why uh, the British decided to uh, start uh, to colonize Australia? Because of the Americans. Eh? That's right, because <laughs> the American Revolution prohibited Georgia from being the penal colony, the, the prisoner's colony. And so the British had to find another place to send their criminals. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the British jails got overcrowded because uh, the Americans didn't take them anymore. So we thought, oh, where is this big continent? Uh, maybe we put the prisoners there. And as a side effect, we also could claim the country for us. So uh, Australia started as a colony of uh, uh, yeah of uh, inmates of, of peop people people uh, uh, who are supposed to be in prison. And so our first uh, fleet arrived, and I think it was about. Uh, maybe 17 ships which arrived uh, uh, next to Sydney Harbour. And so uh, we ha also had, of course, the prison guards and uh, the prisoners were still in prison, but they uh, uh, were f uh, freed. We became free citizens after a couple of years, or sometimes after 20 years, depending uh, on, uh, on the reason why uh, we became prisoners and actually uh, a lot of the very old buildings in Sydney <coughs> were built by convict architects. So we were architects but we were convicts at the same time. So uh, yeah, this is, uh, is part of, of the Australian culture. Uh, every time I go to the Sydney Opera House to hear a beautiful choir, I must say it's not bad considering it's a convict choir. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, Australia was basically not one country, but it was independent colonies. So uh, it was colony of New South Wales, colony of Victoria, Queensland, and so on, and colony of, of uh, New Zealand. And only in 1901, these independent colonies, which just happened to be on the same continent, uh, decided to uh, create their own country, which uh, will not be a colony anymore, but their uh, own country, uh, the Commonwealth, of Australia. Originally, actually, uh, Western Australia is this, this is the country, uh, the state where the capital is called Perth. Western Australia was not supposed to be part of uh, the Commonwealth of Australia, but New Zealand was planned to be part. Now, it worked out differently, so uh, New Zealand is a separate country, and uh, Australia uh, was founded in 1901. Uh, the first capital of Australia was. Melbourne, yeah, which was the biggest city at that time. Uh, Gold Rush made it made it very big, and uh, so the Sydney Siders didn't like it too much. So uh, we finally decided to have the capital in between. So it, neither neither Melbourne nor Sydney should be the capital, and they said, okay, if you put it in between, let's put it in such a position that uh, it can't be attacked by uh, foreign artillery from ships. So uh, a rule was that it had to be at least, I guess, uh, 50 miles inland. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Canberra was founded, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, one third away from Sydney and two thirds away from Melbourne, roughly, and inland. And Canberra is the biggest inland city of Australia mm -hmm. because it's an artificial creation. Yeah? So no one would actually live, uh, not so many people would live inland, but yeah, for a political reason, yeah, was, uh, capital was founded. So, 
every time I go to Canberra, the people tell me, oh, it's not so bad, we can go to the sea, and we always have this type of, of com uh, complex, but they are not living on the sea coast, because okay. Australian cities are on the sea coast, yes. How many people live in Canberra? Uh, about 300,000 people. I think 350,000. So, uh, yeah, so that's a little bit about history now, uh, about, about the effects of, of population. So Australia at this moment has 22 million people. Uh, the surface is uh, more than uh, 7 million square kilometers, so basically it's 20 times bigger than Germany by surface, mm -hmm. and it's the lowest populated country in terms of population density. So uh, only, well, even Mongolia and uh, Namibia have a higher population density <laughs> than Australia. So we speak about uh, two people per square kilometer, uh, which are, however, very unevenly densely populated. Basically, Sydney is running out of space. You might not believe this, but yeah, it's uh, much easier to find real estate in Stuttgart than uh, find it in Sydney or Melbourne. Uh, so, yeah, so Canberra is 350,000 people, and the Australians, we all uh, live basically on the sea coast, very few live, live inland, and when you look, uh, the biggest city which is on the, the coast uh, is uh, Sydney, with uh, 4.2 million people, Melbourne only slightly behind, and the biggest city inland, besides Canberra, would be Toowoomba, with uh, 110,000 people. So the biggest city inland is 40 times smaller than the biggest city on the sea coast. Imagine if uh, Hamburg would be our, our biggest city on the sea coast, then the biggest city inland, which could be somehow in our area, uh, would be 40 times smaller. So just to, just to see how, how the population is, uh, is distributed. Uh, the climate of Australia is, is extremely tough. It's uh, the lowest uh, well, density populated country, as I mentioned, uh, because the climate is not nice to Australia. If the climate would be great, uh, temperatures and enough water, Australia would easily have one billion people. The surface of Australia is about the same as, as Europe, I think 10% smaller than, uh, than Europe. So, yeah, if the climate in Australia would be good, it had one billion people, but it only has uh, 22 million. So uh, it's very tough, and basically we only, the people can only live in, in, a f in few areas where, uh, which have the best climate, which basically is the southeast of Australia. So uh, that would be basically the area uh, between Brisbane and Adelaide. This is where, uh, well, I would say, uh, between Brisbane and Adelaide, when you follow the sea coast, maybe you get about 80 80% uh, of the population. Then there's another area on the coast which would be around Perth, which is about one and a half million people, and some people inland, maybe an hour, maybe two million people who live inland. But so the country is very uh, un un unevenly distributed in terms of population. Um, a friend of mine, he is uh, the former uh, industry minister of Australia, in the 70s, and he wants to study how much population Australia could have in theory. And he was very bold and said, 70 million. And everyone said, he are completely crazy. You, you lost your mind. You know, it's, it's no way Australia could support 70 million people in a country which is 20 times bigger than Germany. 